Hello and welcome to Agenda 2030. I am Toyin Nkamiang John. Every year, the global community meets under the auspices of the Economic and Social Council for eight days, including a three-day ministerial segment tagged the High Level Political Forum, HLPF. The HLPF is the main United Nations platform on sustainable development and it has a central role in the follow-up and review of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and the Sustainable Development Goals SDGs at the global levels. During the meeting, the forum receives and considers voluntary national review reports from selected countries. Nigeria is one of the 47 countries selected to make presentation this year. On the program today, we will focus on the 2020 session of the forum. To stay with us. Nigeria's 2020 Voluntary National Review, VNR, on Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, focuses on the key issues of poverty, SDG 1, and an inclusive economy, SDG 8, health and well-being, SDG 3, education, SDG 4, gender equality, SDG 5, and the enabling environment of peace and security, SDG 16, and partnership, SDG 17. This focus is based on Nigeria's current development priorities and the development objectives of President Muhammad Buhari's administration. This VNR is being developed while facing huge challenges from the COVID-19 pandemic testing Nigeria's public health systems and the collapse in oil prices for an economy still getting 86% of public revenue from oil and gas. This report gives us a vivid picture of the 2020 VNR at the United Nations High Level Political Forum held online for the first time. This year, the meeting of the High Level Political Forum on Sustainable Development convened under the auspices of the Economic and Social Council is currently being held from Tuesday 7 July to Thursday 16 July 2020, including the three-day ministerial meeting 
of the Forum from Tuesday, 14 July to Thursday, 16 July 2020. The theme is Accelerated Action in Transformative Pathways, Realizing the Decade of Action and Delivery for Sustainable Development. The event is held virtually because of the attendant effect of COVID-19 pandemic. As one of the subscribers to the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, Nigeria was among the 44 countries of the United Nations that presented its Voluntary National Review VNR, in 2017 on the implementation of the 2030 Agenda and the SDGs at United Nations High Level Political Forum UNHLPF, held in July 2017. The country also volunteered with other 46 countries for VNR in this 2020. Among the 47 VNR reporting countries for year 2020 are Zambia, Uganda, Trinidad and Tobago, Seychelles, Russia Federation, Republic of Moldova, Mozambique, Gambia, Libya, Morocco, Bulgaria, Austria, and Argentina. The list includes 26 first-time presenters, 20 second-time presenters, and one third-time presenter. Princess Adejake Urilukbe Adefulire gave insight into the report. Nigeria is delighted to submit its second voluntary national review on sustainable development on after its first submission in 2017. It comes amid the global pandemic that threatened to derail the progress on achieving sustainable development goals. We are all committed to in 2015. This makes the review more important in moving forward. Nigeria 2020 National Voluntary Review on Sustainable Development Goals focuses on key issues on poverty reduction, SDG 1, and inclusive economy SDG 8, Health and Well-being SDG 3, Education SDG 4, Gender Equality SDG 5, Enabling Environment for Peace and Security SDG 16, and Global Partnership for the Goal, which is SDG 17. This prioritization was based on our national development priorities as embedded in Nigeria Economy Recovery and Growth Plan 2017 and 2020, and the three cardinal objectives of our president administration, which is economy, security, and fight against corruption. Thus, this voluntary national review was carefully framed to establish these conceptual links. It could be recalled that as part of its follow-up and review mechanisms, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development encourages member states to conduct regular and inclusive reviews of progress at the national and subnational levels, which are country-led and country-driven. The national reviews are expected to serve as a basis for the regular reviews by the high-level political forum, meeting under the auspices of ECOSOC every year in July. As stipulated in paragraph 84 of the 2030 Agenda, Regular reviews by the HLPF are to be voluntary, state-led, undertaken by both developed and developing countries, and shall provide a platform for partnerships, including through the participation of major groups and other relevant stakeholders. Dr. Bala Yusuf Yunusa, Senior Technical Advisor in the Office of the Senior Special Assistant to the President on SDGs, gave more insight on the VNR reporting by Nigeria. Following the adoption of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development by world leaders in September 2015, um, the Economic and Social Council of the United Nations set up uh, what we now know as the High Level Political Forum. The VNR countries are expected to submit comprehensive written reports that will be made available in the VNR database. In addition, each VNR country will also provide main messages summarizing their key findings. 
These main messages are also posted in the VNR database. But what was the process for the preparation of the second national voluntary report by Nigeria? This high-level political forum is a platform that uh, aspire to, uh, to, to hold member countries to account in the overall implementation of the 2030 Agenda. Uh, so in doing that, uh, the concept of voluntary national review, uh, where countries are, are, are encouraged uh, to report voluntarily on annual basis uh, their progress uh, and challenges uh, in the implementation of the uh, sustainable development goals um, in their country. And so um, that process started in 2016, uh, but um, the reports uh, were, were presented in 2017. And so Nigeria was among the few countries, I think about 44 countries, uh, to have submitted their first uh, voluntary national review in 2017. Um, so uh, today, um, this year, 2020, Nigeria is slated and scheduled to present its uh, second voluntary national review to the high-level political forum uh, in New York. Uh, and this to ensure that we achieve um, an evidence-based voluntary national review um, for Nigeria. Uh, we started early uh, November last year uh, with the establishment of um, a voluntary national review planning committee. Uh, and that committee midwived uh, what we now have as the co-working group uh, on Nigeria's 2020 Voluntary National Review. And this group is um, it's, it's quite broad, uh, representatives from the federal ministries, department and agencies, uh, representatives of the um, development partner groups, uh, organized private sector, uh, civil society organizations, um, are all represented in the co-working group to provide the strategic guidance and direction for the entire voluntary national review process. And Nigeria from day one, we aimed to produce a report that is inclusive, participatory, involving all the key segments of the society in the entire review process uh, for the 2030 uh, agenda and the SDGs in Nigeria. So that co-working group had a mandate to provide technical uh, leadership and guidance in the entire process. And that process started by uh, sensitizing and consulting the key um, stakeholders, uh, namely the civil society organizations, the organized private sector, uh, persons with disability, women groups, uh, all embedded within the uh, civil society segment. And obviously um, the United Nations system uh, development partners uh, in their own respective uh, uh, forum. Uh, we've made a series of presentations uh, on uh, the priority reporting uh, SDGs. In preparing the report, countries are expected to focus on priority reporting SDGs. Again, Dr. Bala gave insight to the scope of the Nigerian report. So for the 2020 uh, high-level political forum, uh, Nigeria has narrowed down to reporting on seven priority reporting SDGs. And these are SDG 1, 3, 4, 5, 8, 16 and 17. And these SDGs um, uh, were not to say that all the other uh, uh, remaining SDGs um, are not priority for Nigeria, but these are the priority reporting SDGs that are embedded into the Nigeria's current development uh, priority as captured in the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan uh, ERGP 2017 to 2020, uh, which is a three year uh, time frame. And incidentally, uh, the, the timing for this the, uh, for this uh, voluntary national review also covers adequately that uh, uh, time frame. So we, we prioritize this based on our national development priority at this point in time and also the cardinal objective of President uh, Buhari's administration, namely the economy, uh, fight against corruption and security. And if you see the seven SDGs, there's, there's a handshake uh, between the seven uh, uh, priority reporting SDGs, uh, SDG 1 is about uh, 
uh, no poverty, SDG 3 is about uh, quality health and well-being, SDG 4 is about qualitative and inclusive education, SDG 5 is about uh, gender equality and women empowerment, uh, SDG 8 is about decent jobs and economic growth, uh, SDG 16 is about uh, strong institutions, peace, and, uh, peace and, 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 and justice and security. Uh, and then SDG 17 is about generally uh, strengthening partnership for the goals as well as the implementation uh, mechanisms or means uh, for the goals. So you can see how this uh, relates neatly into the economic recovery and growth plan uh, which has three cardinal objectives that of restoring economic growth investing in people and building a globally competitive economy and if you look at these three cardinal objectives of uh, embedded in ERGP and the three cardinal objectives in, uh, of the Buhari administration uh, naturally speaks to uh, the aspirations of these seven uh, reporting SDGs. Preparing Voluntary National Review's report in a COVID-19 era presented a different kind of challenge, especially with the demand for inclusivity in the consultation. This was one of the challenges the Office of the Senior Special Assistance to the President on SDGs had to surmount. To ensure that no one is left behind in the entire process we, uh, we had earlier planned to do uh, regional workshops uh, as well as the national workshop before even a validation workshop to ensure that uh, the report, the research that we've done to put all this uh, evidence together uh, would stand the test of uh, scrutiny. Unfortunately, just as we commenced the preparation for these workshops, uh, the COVID challenge came, COVID-19 pandemic um, arrived um, 27th of February and the imminent lockdown uh, uh, at the end of March. So practically we could not proceed with the plan uh, regional and, and, and national physical workshops and therefore we had to think outside the box and therefore decided to go virtual and decided to hold these consultations across the key segments of the society. So we had the um, civil society and the scientific community segment, uh, we had the persons with disability segment. The voluntary national reviews aim to facilitate the sharing of experiences, including successes, challenges and lessons learned, with a view to accelerating the implementation of the 2030 Agenda. The VNRs also seek to strengthen policies and institutions of government and to mobilize multi-stakeholder support and partnership for the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals. As a result of disruption in essential services, visits to hospitals for normal outpatients have been reduced or put on hold, raising concerns about proper medical care for ailing children and kids with chronic medical issues amidst the raging COVID-19. Here's what parents should know about medical care for ailing children at a time like this. As COVID-19 continues to spread, children with special health needs and chronic or complex medical conditions like cancer may be at increased risk of poor health care or even death. This is due largely to limited treatments, therapy and medical support arising from the pandemic which has seen health facilities around the world hugely overwhelmed. Bala Yusuf Yunisa, Senior Technical Advisor to the Office of the Senior Special Assistant to the President on SDGs, gives an insight. COVID-19 has challenged the health system. This is precisely what we're talking about uh, because already uh, we had uh, issues around um, lack of funding, lack of qualified frontline health workers um, and, and, and sometimes lack of equipment. And with COVID-19, that is even more pronounced because we've seen how medical doctors uh, and frontline health workers at the front line, you know, were actually um, um, having to even begin not to appear in their respective posts for the fear that they don't have the personal protective equipment you know, that will enable them to discharge their mandate effectively. Uh, so to that, and, and by the spillover, is that 
other basic healthcare services, prenatal, antenatal, uh, 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 prenatal and postnatal care uh, 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 services were gen then re re relegated to the background because there isn't the space to accommodate this and many other uh, 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 illnesses. So this is precisely the impact we are talking about. Though it is factual that children have been relatively spared by the viral coronavirus disease, there are, however, evidence that some may get infected. More at risk are children with underlying health conditions who require frequent visits to the clinic or urgent hospital care. Prominent Monday Odin executive director of Untold Story Behind the Story Foundation, an NGO that creates awareness on childhood cancer as well as raises funds to help treat underprivileged children with cancer and other complex medical conditions, spoke about the plight of some of these children. The sophisticated symptoms for children affected with cancer is not like the ones with um, adults that we know that, okay, this is breast cancer. You don't know if this child is actually cancer. If until you do investigations, you probably do a biopsy, you know. That's, so if a child says, this is what is wrong with me, you need to bring the child to the hospital. COVID-19 or not COVID-19, you need to get the child to the hospital in as much as there's a restriction. Cancer spreads like in the next one hour, it has gone viral. So you need to take it as as cautious as it is, as it's coming, deal with it that way, so that you give, you help the child live. There's pressure on the health sector, the world over, and because of this pressure, because of this attention being paid to uh, the virus, other kinds of ailments which are equally life-threatening, you know, are being, yeah, receiving less attention. Sufferers are probably just quiet, probably dying in silence, you know, are probably receiving less attention. Ordinarily, you would expect that before now, they will have enjoyed a higher attention, but they are facing some kind of inadvertent neglect, which is also very, very unfortunate. COVID-19 has come to challenge our health, to affect our health. We're concerned about it because we need a good, we need to have a good health to be able to bring about economic development and progress in our polity. You know, so in, in the same way as we're dealing with COVID-19, we shouldn't forget other deadly diseases as well. In the face of the challenge, with some hospitals rejecting patients, experts have recommended the option of telemedicine. This notwithstanding is, however, indisputable that children battling ailments like cancer at this time still have to keep up visits to medical facilities for proper treatments, especially chemotherapy. With shortage of medical personnel to attend to non-COVID patients and fear of ignorantly admitting outpatients with COVID-19, reportedly resulting in hospitals rejecting patients, becoming a source of concern to many, experts advised that people should visit the hospital only when it is absolutely necessary. Actually, because of the whole restriction of movement, the, my patients that come to the hospital majorly are the, probably the ones on chemo treatment. That is the one that comes every month for his treatment because he can't avoid, he can't stay out of his chemo treatment. So those are the ones that come. But generally speaking, children with um, sickle cell, they have like in the hospital where I work, their parents have a WhatsApp group. They are graded. The children, there are some that are from 0 to 10. There are some that are from 12 upwards. They graded them. So the ones 12 upwards have a phone. If you, are, if you have a symptom, you just do WhatsApp call with your consultant and with your nurses and all that. If it's the ones that you now need to come to the hospital, the parents break them. But usually, those ones that have challenges, have, their parents have a way of talking with their doctors via WhatsApp, we have a WhatsApp group for them. I think the way forward, it is for us to massively uh, invest in, in provision of um, uh, personal protective equipment so that our healthcare professionals will be protected and then they are enabled to 
render other service and uh, services that they're supposed to that are critical to the delivery of healthcare in addition to uh, handling the uh, COVID-19 outbreak and that has to be uh, a collective responsibility both state and non-state actors and we have seen how the organized private sector has come to uh, to reinforce the the public sector uh, during this COVID uh, COVID challenge we've seen massive donations to um, the pro for example the the, the provision of ambulances uh, personal protective equipment by private organization and other spirited Nigerians and individuals so this is I think the way to go so that we can quickly put uh, the, imp uh, the impact of COVID-19 behind us, uh, continue, begin to live with it, and obviously uh, uh, not to let other uh, sub-segment of the health sector continue to suffer. But the solution to it, I think, is that um, we are being challenged once again to ramp up our health infrastructure, not just in terms of physical facility, but in terms of uh, personnel, so that we can cope with all um, all that we need to cope with, first uh, in terms of attending to those who are equally facing uh, life-threatening ailments like cancer, like bronchitis, like um, hypertension, like HIV, you know, like diabetes and the rest of them. These are also very deadly diseases and a lot of people are dying of, um, of, of, from these diseases according to statistics. You know, they also de 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 um, deserve equal attention. And all, our, all efforts should be made to ensure that these as people are not neglected because we are talking about health. Remember, you can always watch this program and other episodes by subscribing to our YouTube channels on youtube.com forward slash fresh news TV and youtube.com forward slash agenda 2030 TV. You can also watch the program live on Facebook. Just log on to www.facebook.com forward slash fresh news NG and www.facebook.com forward slash agenda 2030 TV. Follow us on all our social media platforms at agenda 2030 TV on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Remember to drop your comments and share with your contacts. Do use the hashtag Agenda2030 and hashtag Agenda2030TV. And that's how much we can take on the program this week. Do keep a date with us next week for another insightful episode. I am Tony Nkamiang John. Thank you for staying with us.